Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's video, since the year is about to end, I'm going to show you how to do year-end reporting. We're going to take all of our sales from 2020, group them together in an aggregate query, group them by month, and show the monthly sales total. This way, it's easy to generate your year-end reports. Today's question comes from Jamie from Henderson, Nevada, one of my gold members. Jamie says, with 2020 coming to a close soon, I need to put together my year-end sales report. I need to create a report with just sales from January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2020, showing the total sales for each month. It would be nice to not have to edit this report every year to change the dates so my secretary can just run it next year without me being involved. Can this be done? Of course, Jamie, Microsoft Access does this quite well. Let me show you how. Okay, here's my blank customer database. You can download this right from my website. There's a link down below. It's a free template. Open that up. I've snazzed up the main menu a little bit since the version that was posted on the website, but it's basically the same thing. In fact, for this lesson, we really don't need any of this stuff. Let's just create an order table. All right, create, table design. Start off with our auto number or order ID, auto number. You'd want an order date. That's a date time field. You'd want an amount. That's a currency value. And you'd want the rest of the stuff in here for the order, like the customer ID. You're going to have a second table for all your order detail, line items, all that stuff. But for this example, let's just assume you've got all the information you need in the one table. I cover how to properly set up an order entry system in my regular expert lessons. And I'm going to be setting up a tech help video on this very soon. But for now, let's just assume this is your order table. It's all you really need for this example. Save. I'll call this my order T. Primary key, yes. And let's put some sample data in. So let's say you've got some dates in here from before 2020. So let's say you got some sales in here from 1519 for hundred dollars. Maybe from uh, six two nineteen, all right, 150. So those those shouldn't show up in the report. Now let's put in some stuff from 2020. So one one twenty twenty for fifty bucks. Let's put in two five twenty. For seventy-five dollars, let's put another two five twenty because we want these to group together, right? One twenty, another February. Let's go two eighteen for eight hundred dollars, and then a couple more records in here. So four one. It is currently twenty twenty, so the year should default. All right, fifteen dollars. And if you don't have all this set up in one table like this, just make a query and join it together. All right, do a totals query. I have lots of videos on that stuff. Aggregate queries, they're called. In fact, we're going to do an aggregate query pretty soon in just a minute here. You just group together your order table with your details, do an aggregate query, and group it together based on the order ID. That way you get the total for each order. I'm going to show you how to group these together for each month in just a minute. All right, a couple more values in here. All right, let's put in 12 one 20. Whoop, 12 one 20, 20, not the year, 120. And I forgot an amount up there. Let's put in 12 31 20. Okay, and now I want to show you a problem that could exist. If you have orders in your database with dates and times, okay, I know a lot of people use now when they have records that are created because you want the date and time that the order was placed. Maybe you want to know exactly when the customer was in your shop. That way you can generate a list later on to see what are your popular times of the day for orders being placed. So your data, your data might look like this, 1231 at 513 p.m., and that's too wide for that field, so we'll just widen it out. Okay, you might have a date in there like that. That's perfectly plausible. In fact, let's make this one smaller. Let's make this the big order, just so you can see what happens. Okay, so here's my date. All right, and as you can see, that date sometimes includes a time. Some of these other ones might have time values in there as well, but that's not as important as 1231 having a time on it. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So next step is, actually, let's put in a couple dates from 2021. Let's say there's a couple advanced orders in the system. You don't want these showing up also. Okay. There. Maybe you got a couple. Or maybe, maybe let's pretend that we're running this at the end of January 2021. You're doing your year-end report for 2020. All right? You don't want to see the couple of orders that have already been entered for this new year. Right? Because I'm sure some of you, of course, will be watching this in the future. I get people all the time saying, hey, I'm watching your lesson from 2007, and it still works great. Of course it does. This stuff hasn't changed in 20 years. Okay, let's save it. Now let's make a query and bring in just the stuff from 2020. All right, so let's create, 
Query design. Let's bring in my order table. Let me close this. All right, let's bring in all the fields, the star, just so we can see everything. Now I want to limit the order date, okay? Now a lot of you know how to use the between keyword. I've got lessons on that. You can go watch those if you want to. And down here under criteria, you could say between. Now if you're typing in actual dates, let's put in actual dates for now, all right? 1-1-2020 one, one, and 12-31-2020. All right, that's what you'd think would give you the proper year. Let's save this. This will be my order queue. Okay, now let's run it. Now look what happens. All right, field zero is, is a duplicated field. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, notice I've got all the records from 2020, except I'm missing that 1231 at 5 p.m. order because between includes the endpoints. However, a time by it or a date by itself without a time is considered that date at midnight. It doesn't include everything after it. So 1231 at 5 p.m. is technically outside that range. So keep that in mind when you're working with dates. Unless the data in your tables is strictly just dates, all right, then you have to use this next method because this won't do it. In fact, I have a whole other video that I did on this subject called Between is Not Always Right. And I'll put a link down below. It's, I think it's called Between is Wrong. Look for it down in the links down below the video. So the way we'd handle this particular situation is not with the between keyword, but we'd use an inequality, okay? We'd say it has to be, the date has to be greater than or equal to 1-1-2020 and less than 1-1-2021, all right? What that'll do is it will give you everything from 1-1-2020 at midnight and less than but not equal to one one. 2021. That'll give you December 31st all the way up to, but not including midnight of the next day. And if I run this now, you get that. And there's my new record that I was missing. Okay, so that's important. Keep that in mind. Okay, now this is what Jamie wants to try to avoid. He doesn't want to have to keep changing the query so that his end user, his secretary, can just run this report and not have to worry about changing this in 2021. All right, you don't want to have dates hard-coded all over your database in your queries and your VB code and your forms. Okay, you want the user to be able to specify it. Now, you could put parameters down here. If you don't know what parameters are, if you haven't never done a parameter query before, go watch that video. I'll put a link down below. I got a video on doing parameter queries. And down here, you could put in here, enter start date, right? And then you could put enter the, the end date here. But we're going we're gonna to do something better than that. We're not going to make the user type in two dates. Since this is an annual report, I just want to type in the year. I don't want to have to type in 1 1 2020 and then 12 31 20, right? Let's just type in 2020. So how do I do that? Well, first, let's get rid of this. Let's isolate the year from the order date, okay? Just the year of whatever this is. And we can do that with the year function. So let's create a new calculated query field. And again, I got videos on calculated query fields. Go watch those. All right, I'll come down here. Let's just call it O year. That's my order year. What's that going to be? It's going to be the year function of... And then in brackets, sometimes you have to put the brackets on, sometimes you don't. I like to do it in queries. Order date. Okay. If you don't have spaces in your field names, usually you don't need those brackets, but sometimes you do. If not, it'll put quotes around there, and that's not what we want. Okay. Now run the query, and look at that. I've got the order year right here isolated in its own field. Okay. Isn't that nice? Now all I have to do is put a query criteria on there. And again, I got videos for query criteria. Go watch those. That's the criteria list down here. Now I can put the actual value 2020 in there if I want to. And now I get just 2020. Or I can make that a parameter. Right? Enter the year. Like that. Now whenever this runs, enter the year. All right, give me 2020. There you go. All right, run it again. Give me 2021. Boom. Boom. See that? All right, it's powerful stuff. All right, I cover all this and lots more in my full classes. Now, if you wanted, let me run this again. If you wanted a report with all of the details, with like each order ID and the customer and all that stuff, you could take this data and throw it right into a report. I just put report grouping levels on. Again, I got other lessons on that. But since Jamie only wants a simplified year-end report showing the totals for each month. Let's just do an aggregate query here. Let's group this together by the month. Okay, so again, let's let's isolate the month over here, right? O month. That's going to be the month of order date. 
Okay. No criteria. that We want to see them all, 1 through 12. Now run it. 2020. There's your month. Okay. And again, I got separate lessons on all these date functions, like year, month, day, hour, minute, all those. Date serial. There's lots of good stuff. Okay, so now we're ready to turn this into an aggregate query. What's an aggregate query? Well, again, go watch the aggregate query video first. But what that basically does is it groups the data together based on whatever fields you pick. So in this case, I want to group this together by year and month. So all the years are grouped together and all the months that are different are grouped together. Okay, so each one of these are different. So like these three records will get grouped together. Okay, how does that work? Well, first thing we have to do is get rid of this star because you can't aggregate based on an asterisk. That's okay. We don't really need all this data anyways. So I'm going to get rid of that order t dot star. Now in here we need the year, okay, because we have to ask for the year. Then we need the month to do the grouping. So let's turn on totals now. Notice how it says group by group by. Okay, if I run that now, enter the year. Look at that. They're all grouped together. We have one individual record for February, and there's three orders in there. How do I see what that order total is? Well, now you can add the amount back in, but you don't want to group by, because if you group by, it's going to show you each individual record, because they're all unique, unless you had two orders that were 100. Those would get grouped together. But what we want to do is total those up, right? Total these three things up. And that's where the aggregate query comes in handy, because now I change the group by to sum. Right? There's sum, average, min, max, all kinds of stuff in here. I have whole lessons on this stuff. But sum is the one we want for this one. Now when I run it, 2020, I get the total for each month. And these should sort in the right order. If not, you can just throw a sort on here. And that should sort those in the right order. See that? Now you have the data to put into your report. I like to do this in a query first, because now you can use this query in other places too. If you want to do a quick summary, like a form, you want to pop up a quick summary form in your database to see what your monthly sales totals for the year so far are, or you want to make a chart, right? You want to put a chart up. Maybe a little pie chart summary, like a, a switchboard, right? So you can see where your sales are for the month, all that kind of stuff. I love these aggregate queries. They're great. And again, I've got lots of other free videos on my website that explain how to do a lot of this stuff in more depth, too. Plus, my full courses cover this in detail. So now, Jamie, hopefully this explains enough to you so you can now take this query and you can use this query as the basis for your report. And throwing the report together is easy. I'll show the members in the extended cut video how to put the report together. It's quite simple. Plus, members, I'll show you how to do this. Every time we run this query, whether we're in here or whether we're out here and, and we have a report that's based on it, every time you open this up, you got to type in the year. All right? And if you're running it a bunch of times, that gets kind of tedious. So I'm going to show you how to put a field right here on your main menu that says, and, and a button. You click the button. The button will say, open up the year-end report, and you can put in the year there. And I'll have that year default to this year. How's that sound? So we'll cover all that in the extended cut. Want to learn more about this stuff? Well, in the extended cut for members, 15 minutes long, I'll show you first how to put the year field on the main menu. So you don't have to keep typing in 2020 every time you run this query. In fact, I'll have it default to the current year. I'll put little buttons on there for you so you can click the little buttons to go plus and minus here. That's kind of neat, right? We'll make buttons to run the sales query. Then we'll build the sales report, make a button for that. In the report, I'll show you how to bring all that information in. We'll put the year total across the top so it says annual sales for 2020, so that doesn't have to keep repeating. The month, the monthly sales totals that we get from the query. I'll show you how to put the name of the month in there, okay, with a little function. And then, of course, a grand total on the bottom. This is all covered in the members only extended cut, 15 minutes long. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. 
YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.